Right, let's get some real talk going now. What we're going to deal with today. What we're going to do with today. Let's get an air of professionalism going here. Now, I might not necessarily always be I'm a straight talking person that talks openly about how dissatisfied I am with the people, colleagues, times that I've worked with in authority positions that don't treat people with dignity and respect. Now, what I'd like to address now is what we are actually facing. I don't know if it's a global scale, but it's definitely a UK scale and probably of a Western developed world scale is Psychological Warfare 101. Psychological warfare upon the masses of the human race. Let's be honest. Now, industrialization has been prevalent in our lives as people living in the farmyard, systematic, more so than those living in environments of nature or forests. Before this, I have friends that went to start their own little communes and things because they saw this coming. And what it is, is whether you can sustain it or whether you're going to go off grid and run away from it all like anybody that really wants to maintain their sanity. Because it's very personal when you hear personal stories during this where people have been told they got COVID for seven weeks and they feel okay, but they've been told they have to isolate because they've still got COVID. And as someone said, it is just seasonal flu in all fairness it dies at a certain temperature like seasonal flu that's why in winter to have lockdown was actually insanity at its finest within the psychological warfare front to have people in your demographic believe it is sad but there are people up and down the country that do believe it they have choose not to emancipate themselves from mental slavery so it brings me round to this when you see people suffering that are getting surgery just before Christmas, that won't have visitors, that might get told they've got COVID for seven, eight, nine, ten weeks and might keep them isolated. And the madness that is ensued with some of this stuff is what I'd like to tackle because I come up with something nigh a decade ago, eight years ago, as an ex-Sky engineer, installer, putting up satellite dishes, I used to go to people's homes and have jobs. And I noted when I got to know some squatters via a festival, international squatters, that were using community buildings, they would get kicked out and then they would take it over the guardians, they'd charge the council even £10 rent, and then divide that property up into as many rooms as they can get out of it, and charge cheap rent for professionals. And then they would get complaints from the neighbourhood saying they're not actually handling the rubbish properly and stuff. So it made me go, they should have kept the old guy, the oldest guy in there with the dog that needed housing, actually needed housing. And so that led me to start thinking about charities because I was taking their furniture from one squat to another and it was a practical thing just having a car. And I thought, hmm, homelessness, when they had the legal squats across, they, they opened up in America as well. There's people from the kindness offensive that were going over there to talk about the uses of communal buildings. I said in the winter, these should be staffed like 999 shelters so there'll be no more homeless deaths on the streets. So basically, this is how it come about. Eight years ago, I made a Kickstarter, and I'll always put the link in the comments box, not that anybody bothers to listen. It seems over eight years. I made £14 on that fundraiser. Just the idea of adapting a vehicle like a piece of design art on the streets with a washroom in the back and kit to give out, just for practical purposes. The practical purposes kept growing and growing with the big issue projects where people were offering up their spare room to homeless people. If you made a sofa surfing app and gave ex and incentives, like close protection training and award schemes, then you'd have more outlets for people to get mobilised and have more of a mix-up in the lower working classes. This could be used in different ways. And the practicalities of having a vehicle on the street was just how it started. Since Covid, and long before that, the Thrive capabilities of a social worker branding started to become monumental. I thought I joined all the homeless charities in London, the arts charities, choir with no name, streetwise opera, crisis, 
St Mungo's, the list goes on. To have somebody with that handheld kit that can treat those people to say this oh, will enrol you with these places, you can get a meal in some of them once a week and sense community and sit down. Lottery funded stuff. So no one's actually alone at the base grassroots and you're giving people the bones to get themselves up and better. Anyway, since then, I figured it could make its own media content and thus justify itself and make money, giving out literature like The Biggest Issue and also filming injustices up and down across the, across the uh, board. Am I filming this? Is this even filming? Yeah. So that was, um, that started growing and growing. And then it was like, okay, people and injustices. I've been in, in the hands of the systematic a bit too much and I've needed help outside help to shine a light on it. People like, you can imagine Snoop Doggy Dogs of the world and people that face injustice in being in weird situations. Somehow I think I've grown momentum and my, my, persona is somehow known and thus I get unnatural attention somehow anyway to have help would have been the crux of all this to have a light shone on injustice money distributed to that distribution of wealth via wealthier channels footballing teams celebrity the list goes on of people that could potentially just throw money at injustices, get the best lawyers on it and say, what is this actually happening? In cases of forced adoptions was the main one that I've, because I've, in my lifetime, I've met two women that have been devastated by the fact that this has happened. And it's more common than you think. If I've met two people, how many are there up and down the country? And these are the things that aren't really highlighted. But to just have that independent adjudicator branch in the community... It would serve that purpose as well. And then the next level of help, potentially, could be as a link for facilitating NVQs, like the Prince's Trust, in farming, hostel, hotel, woofing. For, this could just work for youth, but anyway, you'd be getting uh, passports, fixed abodes, passports would be the legal squats, getting people mobilised. And the other, other main point, point one, when it comes to this COVID is all this stuff, medical and funeral care. Just to free up the workforces. This is a long time coming because this is just common sense and it's what we've all been waiting for subconsciously for so long. It's like you've got boo part, you've got NHS. You've got people going mad clapping for NHS like this and then you go, no, no, no. Like my friend getting these stuff that happens within the NHS is not always prime it's you everybody I guarantee if you comment in the box below you can tell me how many people have had injustice within the systematic sense neglect or where somebody has that past the buck culture rotate staff culture desensitized culture three days for an elderly person waiting for antibiotics that person would still be there if it if they'd got the care on the first day they get morphine pumped into them the minute they hit A&E because they collapse after three days of waiting with a chest infection. Then they're dead because of systematic foul. These kind of things are commonplace. Like, that's... There's more. It goes on. And so it's like also surgery. Surgeons, surgeons and having a database of people that can just do good. Good will gestures. Getting it out there, like if someone's waiting for surgery, someone that can speed it up or do it faster. I, you know, we've got so much technological advancements, yet we're somehow failing as a people. And it's ridiculous. It's like, the longer it goes on, the more shit seems to keep occurring. It's psychological warfare. So it's like, we can join together as a community using this, because to just have social workers within a government systematic is insanity at its best, imbalance at its best. I've worked in office environments and I've seen departmentalisation, where the managers are kept separate from the staff, and then there's a breakdown of communication from hand to hand so that person doesn't get a payment, or this, or this is how it happens in benefit systems. Same thing in the medical system, sometimes you have to wonder. And then people say to doubt the integrity of a thing is to say you're a conspiracy theorist. When trust is something that should be earned. It's not something you should automatically have. It's like within the NHS, that's what we're talking about. 
I've known people that have gone to the doctors seeking help and not got the help and somehow managed to die of something they've been asking, why am I bleeding unnaturally? And they say, oh, the other says, and it's ignored that someone in Margate that died in her 20s because of that. And then the naturally healthy fit person goes in and gets a regular checkup and then they're dead from having a, having the treatment for a certain C word. Like, I mean, really, and it's, you have to ask sometimes in this society when a lot of my peers' parents have passed, my mum, somebody that has never gone for a checkup, and I probably attribute to that to the fact that she is still alive. 40 years not getting this or this or this. Considering she drinks enough to sink a ship every day. Wow. But the point is, this is what I'm trying to say, is it needs to be brought about now. Even down to funeral care. In Ireland, people have wakes in their homes, they get to tend their dead, and it stays there for a duration to come to grief terms, to process it. It used to be natural until the plague. Some of these man made, some people believe even the plague is, was somehow certainly facilitated, whether that's a conspiracy theory, but certain aspects of it brought about a level of desensitization as a result, taking the body. If you watch, again, Netflix, Midnight Gospel, episode 6 or 7, talks about this. The body is no longer infected. It cannot spread disease anymore. It's not coughing or sneezing. So basically, they come, take, and then sell the body back. I said that to someone, they go, that's ridiculous. And they're so desensitized to the way they even think, because they think that this is somehow servicing them, this sterility and clinicalness. And, oh, pay for a funeral. Funeral care, simple, made easy. Yeah, sure, that's one option. That's nice. But in some places and cases, then come to the home, treat the body, have it there, and... Do it on public land. Facilitate people with less money. Worrying about funeral care costs. Money is ugly. It's something that society can improve on. And these things in a social worker franchisee branding with call centre could potentially, given all the technological advancements, be a key factor in improving the lives up and down the planet. Across cities and towns. It's terrible light and you can't even see anything through them. But the point is, I'm very serious about this because these times there are some demographic graphics that I'm literally saying that this is cruelty to humans. It is psychological warfare in places where the demographics are haven't liberated themselves, haven't been to festivals, may potentially haven't met certain other demographics, haven't empowered themselves in a more liberated sense, and those people are in danger of allowing the systematic to filter into the systematic in the house, abuse the liberties of their teenage children, their young adults, people at university, like I say, they've been asking for change via marches up and down across the world, the whole Greta thing, phenomenon, climate change, but to achieve those goals should not mean this level of psychological warfare. Telling people they have to have a meal with a drink is becoming very dignified, isn't it? You can't just have a scotch egg either. You can't just have a bar snack, no. You have to have a chips, you eat your chips, you eat your thing. Like you've gone back and regressed into some sort of school draconian. Clinical sterility. Not being able to think for yourself. You might have just had a massive meal and walked into that pub. That chain gang pub. Wrap. No, you can't just have a wrap. You need salad and chips with that wrap because it's not considered a meal because you haven't got free elements. Wow. Just wow. Really? I mean, do we really want that? Do we want people being told that they can't, they have to self-isolate because of a flu or cold, that they can't even go out and see their friends? Ridiculous. And if anybody still believes COVID as COVID is, then God help you. But personally, if the psychological warfare keeps up for the next 10 years and the scientists have been telling the government that they potentially have ended the world by ignoring them for 50, 60, 70 years, liability, dark water scripts think, well then, those next 10 years should be about this.
not harming each other in your community. No, no, not at all. And to suggest that I was talking in a way that was anything other than, hmm, self-preservation, survival, would be ridiculous. And there are certain legal terms that facilitate every person that needs to defend themselves in a psychological warfare under attack like environment. So please live freely and if you run an airline please keep it all going. I see the planes in the sky still. Don't stop demographics from feeling like they can't go abroad and enjoy themselves during a debatable time. The next 10 years very sketchy if you believe scientists. But my problem is that science has become too bloated egoic to dictate your life over this in a fear vibration brought about by historical facts. They don't always repeat themselves and they don't need to, but there are certain demographics that have invested large amounts of money in education, tutoring, industrial, that need you to believe in those cycles or need you to believe in that and to be complacent with it and to believe in the fear. But you can empower yourself. It's up to you. Thank you for listening. And please, let's try and make a rival prime power to the people right on time. And if Banksy gets hold of this, could we just make a piece of design art? A van? A presence? A street presence? With a wet room adapted kit? And just start the ball in motion somehow next year? Thank you.